I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you again. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. Please God bless you, but please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's why I'm here. Leave me alone. Well, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. Guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, Please what? feel. Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? You want, I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, they're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you bring the fucking threat? army. I don't give a f How does this make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? You want, I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, they're gonna get yours and you're gonna I don't get give a f This is Cynthia Ortiz. These are the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast. It is June 20th, 2022. We do the disclaimer, use allegedly, nobody's been found guilty in a court of law just yet. Um, apply the but for standard, but for my need to document threats, ongoing harassment, ongoing crime directed at me, uh, my family, uh, people, in my, you know, friends, anybody, you know, that gets in their way. Um, I wouldn't do these. Apply the reasonable, prudent individual standard. It, it, does it look reasonable or, or prudent to act like he's acting? Um, no. What would any reasonable, prudent individual do if they were me, if they're a stalking victim? I'm no different than her. And so we also assi assert all constitutional rights. Mr. Perry's a public figure. There's a reason that he is in office. We wanted him in office. It's part of a bigger investigation going on that started with the violation of human rights. Starvation, torment, torture of women and children broadcast all over the internet, all over the world. People don't like it when you do that. I guess that you are not getting it. It's like you're just not all there. Not right in the head. There are reactions that people give that are, that show that they understood what you just said. And there are reactions that people give that show that they need to be in a butterfly net. They've got something wrong with them. They're not processing what's happening. They're not processing what you just said. They're not assimil you know, assimilating it all in their minds and then giving the proper reaction. They're not, they're acting like they have fucking no idea what you said. So there's two or three things that are happening. The brain's not working right. It's not working. Because if it were working, you'd act and respond like you understood what somebody said to you and you responded appropriately. And Mr. Perry never does. It's like he has no fucking idea what you're saying. Unfortunately, a lot of them, a lot of the guys helping him do the same thing. We believe Mr. Hun uh, he has Huntington's disease, is what we hear, that causes paranoia and delusion. It eats up your brain. So that's unfortunate, but it's not my problem. I moved to get away. What would cause someone, a man, to force himself on a woman who doesn't like him and never get to date, just sit around, Mr. P Perry has a peep and Tom problem, just sit around watching TV pretending for 12 years every day. That is not the way to live. I don't know what it accomplishes. I really don't. Um, there's also diseases. There's mental illnesses. There's, there's, uh, you know. So you got two or three things going. You got di mental illness, like uh, psychopath or sociopath. Zero empathy for, for other people. You, you know, you hurt people. You don't care who you hurt or how bad you hurt them. You just don't give two fucks. You know, this is life is a, everybody is not per, a person. They are a thing. They are a thing that you use to get some kind of thrill. And uh, you think that gives you power. And it's really bad when men do it to women. It's abuse, domestic violence. So I assert all constitutional rights, that being the First Amendment. I have the right to speak out the same as she does. I have the right to speak out the same as Jodie Foster, Drew Carey. Drew Carey's ex-girlfriend was murdered by her stalker. Murdered. The, 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 the homicide rate among stalking victims is very high. 75% of femicide vic victims were stalked first. 75% were stalked first. It can be deadly. It can be deadly. Mr. Perry's tried to kill me more than once.
The reason I'm still alive, TPD, is there's a police department investigating him from somewhere else, or I'd be dead. They've got you, Charles, had Dave, and Josh, and Joe, and Matt, and all his little, you know, mafia crowd have uh, leaks. Those are people with empathy. They were so disturbed and upset that they talked. The two things that we hear the most are, I can't believe they did that to her. And the second is, how'd she find out? Those are the two things we hear the most. If I'm quoting you, who's getting the information from you to them and them to me? And how? Mr. Perry asked me, I, I, Mr. Perry, I have zero desire to help you, sir. And yet, you're, not act, you're acting like you have no idea what I'm saying. You need to act like you understand what people say, Mr. Perry. If you want to be an elected official, then you have to have some IQ above a rock. Or you're not qualified. You're there because we wanted you there. We're, you're there so that police officers could go undercover and talk to you. It's a little easier to do that if you're a public figure and you're you know, out mingling with the public then it is for them to walk into your office and pretend they needed their taxes done. I mean, use the put two and two together here. And if you can't do that, you need a do you need a doctor, sir. Mr. Robertson, are you just as mentally deranged and uh, I I slow as he is? I mean, we thought you were the smart one. Act like you understood me. Act like you understand what I'm saying to you. Because you guys, all of you, act like you have just no fucking idea. There's so many times where I've said something beforehand. They're threatening me with this specific thing. I'm not vague. They're going to hurt me. I've not said vague things. These are very specific things. Every day I'm threatened with death, murder. They're going to murder me. False arrest. We're going to go into court and perpetrate a fraud upon the court and try to have your ass thrown in jail because you're catching our crime more than anybody else we've known. We don't like that. We're criminals. We like our crime. But society doesn't, guys. Society does not like it. If you're doing something that's illegal, all kinds of people in all 50 states got together and said, we don't like it when people do that. We'll make it a crime. They go to jail. It's not just deviant. It's outside social norms for sure. It's, it's a repulsive. It's a disgust. It makes everybody normal cringe and throw up. You're causing a loss and an injury to another person. You did it maliciously, intentionally, with a forethought. You planned it. And then you did it. And it is illegal and it is crime. And I'm raised in four generations of police. My granddad was the chief. He wasn't just a cop. He was the chief. Sir, he was the chief of police. Mr. Perry, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to help you run me. Why would I do that? When you ask me questions like who told we don't even know what to say to that, Mr. Perry. It's like you're just not all there. When you're gone, the problems are gone with you. I won't be broke ever again. You guys are trying to starve me into a lie. But I've been saying that, Mr. Robertson. You're proving out a whole lot of recordings, sir, when you do exactly what I, te what I tell everybody you're threatening me with. And I'm getting the information from police, sir. I get that you bought everybody in Oklahoma. We don't care. It doesn't matter, does it? Because I'm still getting the information, am I not? Am I getting it from TPD? Do you know? I don't have anything against TPD except that we expected them to carry their weight and do their part, and they didn't. Did you buy them? Did you threaten them? Which one was, or both? Because that's what happens to me every day. Every single day, I'm given an option of, we're going to false arrest you, we're going to kill you, we're going to cause severe economic loss and starve you until you do what we tell you. Until you help our crime, why would you do that? That is what we hear the most. I can't believe they did that to her. And property loss every day. I'll give you whatever you want if you lie. No, you won't, Mr. Perry. You'll give me what you want. Because what I want is for you to give back the money that you owe legit. Not buy a lie money, sir legitimate debt that you owe give that to me and get out and that's what I want what you want is buy a lie money and then the lie and you guys are all used to getting your way you are used to stomping your feet like a bunch of two-year-old little brats and everybody does what you want
And this time it's different. It's different when you do it to me, but I have help. And that is a need to know. It's not for you to know. I was. How do you know I wasn't assigned to Oklahoma? I was assigned to Oklahoma. But I was assigned because my family's here, and I came here to get away. My part was supposed to be done. You are the one keeping it going. You're picking the fight. Every time you cause me the loss of one minute of my time, one penny of my money, you in interfere with one relationship, you try to use family and friends to gaslight me, and it doesn't work. It pisses us off. And you get caught because the allegations, sir, are stalking. You are making unwanted contact. You're forcing yourself on me against my will. I do not like you. I do not love you. I do not want anything to do with you. I moved twice to get away from you and not have a fight and not have to deal with your troublemaking. And you do it all day, every day. You have no life. You're pathetic. You are absolutely pathetic. You don't get a day with a woman doing everything women hate. You don't get one, sir. You're not all there. You act like you have no fucking idea what I'm saying. You never respond right. Acting like that, like this guy here, I'm going to get you. Wow. I have pictures of you. Wow. Okay, two things here. The allegations are stalking. Stalking is a felony in the state of Oklahoma. I assert my e right to equal protection to the application of the laws against stalking, hacking, Keeping grand larceny with intent to coerce, interference with interstate commerce with intent to coerce, interference with commerce, in state commerce with intent to coerce me into anything. You're causing tremendous, horrific duress, trying to force me to say or do something against my will and change my court testimony. You are threatening death. You are threatening my life. You are threatening my safety and my well-being, my economic well-being. Get your hands out of my wallet or your other choice is every time you take a penny of my money, expect to be charged when this is all over with. There's a lot of you. There's a lot of victims. It's overseas because you broadcast us all over the dark web. Our witness says, as long as I've known Charles Perry, he puts cameras in women's homes. He trolls women. He leaves town and tells his wife and his children he lies to him he's going out of town on business and what he's really doing is he's a little troll he's a serial stalker he finds women who are divorced with kids when they're not home he has cameras put in their home he'll buy the landlord and he has hidden cameras put in their home they don't know it they've not consented and then he begins to sell watch time all over the internet, all over the world, on the dark web. Does Josh Schulte have anything to do with that, Mr. Perry? He's from Lubbock. He got in some trouble for having child porn on his computer. His response to that was, it wasn't mine. I host other people's websites. It's theirs. Is that yours? What's the connection, Mr. Perry? All of a sudden, when you do it to me, you thugs... It's different, isn't it? I'm the one that made a difference. When you do it to me, you get caught. And I'm getting the information before you do it, Mr. Roberson. You act like you have no fucking idea what's happening. Like you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying it before, and it's specific. It's a specific threat. We're going to take her car. We're going to starve her until she lies. She can go live under a bridge until she lies. We got to make her look crazy. Let's get her whole family to do an intervention and tell her she's crazy. I never introduced you to my family. I would never in a million years take you fucks around my family. In fact, I said stay away from my family. Mr. Perry, when you ask me who the leaks are, there's two things here. One of those is I'm not told that, and I've said that over and over and over and over. I don't care. Why would I care? You know what I care about is that I got the information. How they get that information from you to them, nobody gives a fuck, sir. No one cares. It doesn't matter. It's not relevant to me at all. That's their deal. You know what matters to me is that I get it from them. So when I know specifically that you have rounded up my family and sat them down in one of your sick little meetings and told them, here's what you're to say to her. And then I guess one of my cousins didn't want to help. So then he starts asking me, is that a leak? Oh, my God. I'm not quoting her or I'm not quoting them. I'm quoting you, sir. So, no, you're the leak. Whoever said that is the leak. Or there's a wiretap order on them. You don't know, nor do I. 
make some wiretap orders or whatever order it is they're going into a courtroom and he playing already what you said. I know that initially it started with a, somebody was an informant. Somebody recorded you. Somebody went to police with it. And then that gave probable cause to get whatever else they need. And you give it more and more every day. I'm not trying to help you. What I want you to do is supposed to be a deterrent to your crime, dumb fuck. When you stalk a woman and hack a woman and peep on a woman, it is a serious violation and a sick one. You are a sick, twisted fuck, all of you. Or you wouldn't be able to bring yourself to do that. S sadism is a disease. Sociopath is a disease. It is not a trophy. You act like you think it's a trophy. I don't even have words for that. Psychopath is a disease. You are everything bad in the world. You take everything that's fun and you suck the fun right out of it. Anything good, you blow it up. And you think that's cool? You think that gives you power? Power, sir, is in service. You can't understand a word I'm saying, can you? Much less be able to determine what power looks like. It's not sitting around on your fat, lazy ass, perverting around all day, making trouble. You are reprehensible, sir. Depraved mind. Demented minds. Where you wouldn't do, you can't, you're too weak to pick on men, so you pick on women. Oh my god, wow. So we, I assert all my equal protection to Violence Against Women Act. Domestic violence laws. Title 18 of the United States Code 1512 and 1513. What I asked you to do is not contact me. I moved twice to not have any kind of conflict, to get away from you and be with my family. They, I did not introduce you to them. I never would, I wouldn't bring you around them. So if you know them, you took it upon yourself to go introduce yourself to them. And any kind of intervention would confirm what our guys got when they said Mr. Perry is a delusional whack job. He has gone up to Oklahoma and told four different stories. One is she's a girlfriend. Two is she's a fiance. Three is she's a w wife. And he's put, uh, he's got a, actually gone so far as to forge a marriage license and throw, he's showing that everywhere. And, f or a concubine, or the next minute she's a threat and he needs an entourage. Do you know any, the guy said, I'm quoting the guy, do you know anybody who goes where the threat is and leaves the safety of his home five hour six hour drive away or eight hour whatever it is and, and and won't fucking leave they can't get the bitch to leave oklahoma do you know anybody that goes to where the threat is and won't leave i mean come on this girl paid her boss five thousand dollars that she did not have plus lost all the money she would have made had she been at work she paid her boss five grand in no-show fines to avoid a threat Move twice. And he's actually with a straight face saying that he's going to Oklahoma and he's under threat and needs an entourage instead of staying home in Lubbock where there is the safety far, far away from her. Do you know anybody that does that if they truly believe they're under threat? I think that guy's a wacky guy. He d First of all, they, she won't have a fucking thing to do with them. And he's telling people they're married. And forged her name. There's no ceremony. There's, she hasn't consented. She didn't know anything about it. He's telling everybody not to tell her about it. If somebody says, I've got this document with her signature on it, but don't tell her. It shows her consent, but don't talk to her about it. You got a flag right there, something's off. Because if it's legit, they don't care if you talk to me about it. Lucky Miller asked me about it. Not coming to where I was staying five minutes from Manfred Police Department. Three minutes. I mean, right, I mean, the, the police department was right, just right there from the hotel where I was staying. Maybe not even a five minute drive. Maybe not even that far. Very, very close. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that to come see me. He comes all the way an hour into prior where my club is, Sensations, and talks to me there. And asks me about it there. And then begins to express deep disdain for your interference with my income. Disdain. He said, I've told them, 
I can't have people in my town inconvenienced because you're now you're putting a burden on Cynthia taking her money. She can't pay her bills. It's not that she doesn't want to. It's that you are making it intentionally where she can't. You're the causation. You are intentionally taking her money. Grand larceny with intent to coerce. It's a crime, Mr. Perry, not a trophy. And when I say that, you clearly have no fucking idea what I'm saying because you failed to respond appropriately. And our doctor has told the judge that you're severely mentally disabled and severely mentally ill and you are proving her right every day. And when I make these statements and you begin to go, yeah, I can starve you into a lie. Yeah, I, I can do this. I can do it. No, sir. Wrong. You're about to go to jail, Mr. Perry, and you act like you fucking don't know. While you're asking me who told, while you're asking me who's helping me, while you're calling around to find out, or is it you, is it you, all kinds of police departments, while you're putting it out there that you will pay big money for the actual recordings that I've typed up in my emails, 40,000 emails, representing 40,000 recordings of you committing a crime against me or planning one. And you're offering all kinds of money. While you're doing that, Mr. Perry, you're claiming that you can do this and get away with it. Again, sir, you act like you just don't know what I'm saying. Which then it gives our shrink all kinds of fuel to take to the judge and go, he has no idea what she's saying. Can't understand a word. He's severely mentally disabled, most likely from an aging degenerative disease. And he should be hospitalized immediately and his family has the legal authority to do that and they're not doing that what is their criminal liability in this Jacqueline Jordan and Matthew or his attorneys and that's been discussed and I'm not going to divulge what that is to you it's a need to know I said I don't like you move on everybody can move on why can't you when something is a criminal act David that means people don't like it when you do that, sir. And so when you're told on Mr. Roberson, you're being stopped. And I get you're not used to that. No one cares, sir. I'm sorry. They just don't care. Everyone's really tired of watching me suffer and watching Mr. Neely suffer. And you go around and you brag about what you can do and get away with. And you've said that to the wrong people, just so you know. You've talked to our guys face to face. They tell me it's so easy to sting off these guys, it's, it's not even fair. They love to brag about what they can do and get away with. But they said it to us and just didn't know that's who they said it to. You've been under investigation for a long time, so uh, you know a lot of things can happen over a long period of time, can, right? Can, right, Mr. Robertson? How many people have you interacted with in the past six, seven years? And you just didn't know it was a cop. He was sick and tired of watching you, what you're doing to me. The things we hear the most, Mr. Robertson, are, I can't believe they did that to her. And the second is, because of that, because there's people going, I can't believe they're putting her through this. I can't believe they're doing this to her. Mr. Perry, do not contact me. I'm not, this is not a conversation. Act like you understand me. Everybody's embarrassed by you, sir. Mr. Perry, listen to the words. What you're doing is offensive and inappropriate and bizarre. You're bizarre. We, you've been told to stop or you're being stopped every time you're told on. Uh, why don't you understand that? You need to get a doctor to help you. Really, I'm not, I'm not shitting you. Maybe you do too, Mr. Robertson. Act like you understand me. The biggest thing they say is I can't believe they did that to her. And because people are saying that, the next question is how did she find out? Do you understand that, Mr. Robertson? Are you able to put two and two together? That those two work together? One happens because of the other? Do you know what I'm saying? Because Mr. Perry has no idea. You can clearly see by his reactions being very inappropriate. He doesn't understand a fucking thing he's saying. I don't like you. There's nothing to want about a bitch who starves women tortures and torments, deprives women and children of their basic human needs, and you pissed off all the wrong people when you did it to me. It's different. 
when you do it to me. So you took my home. We found out you are looking for the recordings. And you got big money on the table. And you don't have any takers. Now what do you do? Second thing is, we found out of your code words, Muffin Man, that you guys use little daycare code words. Muffin Man is the nickname for one of your people, right? I know who it is. I'm not saying it. There's a reason I'm not going to say it. And Rumpled Steel Skin and Gre Hensel and Gretel and <coughs> um, uh, Ratatouille. And I mean, all these code words. Pin the tail on the donkey. All these code words you use. Like when you coaxed Mike to Pensacola, Miss Officer Neely, who took my vandalism report. That one. The one you tried to kill and when he didn't die, you framed him. And everybody knows that. Do you think people don't know? They know. They're mad. We know. Our guys went nast. The timing of this is awfully fishy. Six days after a car vandalism. At first I had a threat to my car. It was a specific threat. It wasn't a vague threat. It was specific. I'm going to show you. Prissy pants. Golly. That is dated August 23rd, 2019. A very specific threat. I'm going to have her car towed and sold. It's not legal, but it don't I don't care. I'm going to break the law anyway. I'm going to have her car towed and sold before she figures out it's not legal. You said it. It was recorded. We got it, and I put it out, didn't I? It's right here. I put everything goes to an attorney first, and then it goes out from there. And I'm not going to tell you who puts what it. The crime isn't talking about what your crime is. I know you think so. There's no crime in being, you know, being vocal like Polly Peretti, Susan Wilson. Susan Wilson had a church boy, a guy she went to church with, put hidden cameras in her home. What's wrong with you church people? Why you act like that? Um, and then uh, Drew Carey, David Letterman, everybody who's been a victim of stalking, you can talk about it. TikTok girl. You think you're exempt from the law? Why do you think that? Because you keep, we get that stuff like that. Here's the thing, David. When we're quoting you and you think you're, you're getting away with something, why, why do you think that, sir? It speaks to your pro mental status. If you think you're getting away with something, when we're quoting you, I've not seen that before. We're quoting your guy now. When Charles pesters Cynthia and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've not seen before. We don't know who these guys are. We should have found out. Maybe we should, yeah, six years to go in a strip club and get some guy. I told you. I even told you because I was bored out of my mind with Sting Up and Y'all. I, I mean, bored out of my mind. I'd like a challenge. Here's what you need to do. I'm going to help you a little bit. It's that pathetic. It's that, it's that, it's so easy it's not even fair. It's that bad. So I'm going to help you here. What I would, what you, what I do is I meet somebody and I'm just talking to them and I let them talk. And things usually kind of come out, whatever I want to know. It'll come out usually on its own when you get somebody relaxed and they trust you. Right? I can get people to say things they didn't mean to say. Right, Mr. Roberson? I mean, I, you, maybe, you're not, maybe you're not able to understand what's happening. Maybe you've got degenerative mind disease too. Alzheimer's or something. Senile dementia. Asphasia. Huntington's disease. I mean, people act, when, they, when you tell them something, they either act like they understood you or they act like they don't. They don't. And when you have to say the same thing over and over and over, and they still act like they don't understand you, then you have to wonder, which, which disease is it? Something. That's not normal. So, I don't like Mr. Perry. I'm not in love with him. He, I feel nothing for Mr. Perry, but deep, 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 deep disgust. You don't go through all the trouble I've gone through to get away from someone if you like them. He's delusional. He's sitting around on his fat, lazy ass, perverting around, watching TV, pretending. And that's what the man said. Mr. Perry tells people all these different stories. He's told all, he's inserted himself into Cynthia's life by hanging out with her, her friends and family. But everybody, six years into this, kind of started to wonder about him, his mental status, because he's been, he's, he's, been, he's seen with her friends and family, but never with her. She's suing him, trying to get protective orders all the time. So that doesn't look like they're in love. That looks like he's a stalker. And he's creating a fantasy, and he's trying to live out that fantasy in Oklahoma. 
He's never in Lubbock. When's the last time you were seen in Lubbock, Mr. Perry? When's the last time you were seen meeting with constituents? You want to be an elected official, then go meet with your constituents. In Texas, where you live. You got a tax firm. I don't know. Did you retire? Find something to do. Go play golf or something. In Lubbock. When's the last time you were seen out with your wife and kids? We want to know the answers to that. A lot of people want to know the answer to that. We've heard it had it's not much. You're here more than they, you're in Texas. We had another one. The guy said, if, if I put this thing in court, if I go after her like Mr. Perry wants me to, do I have any alibi? Do I have an alibi for him that he can say she, he's doing anything but what she says? And the guy said, no, uh, there's no. He's always in Oklahoma sitting his fat ass in a hotel room watching her work, watching her fight him off of her, watching her work. And um, he said, well, what about his family? I don't, I don't know, he said. And the other guy said, what about his constituents? He said, I don't know. What I'm telling you is he's always here. And he's always sitting around watching her, trying to plan the next shitty thing to do to her. It's made a lot of people mad. Like, who the hell fucking does that? Who the hell fucking does that? It's not a trophy, sir. You're offending people. And so when you offend people, we get stuff like this. It's a very specific threat, is it not? You want to starve me into a lie? What am I supposed to lie about if you keep doing what I say you're doing? And I say it beforehand, not after. So what is it you want me to lie about when you do that? I'm not trying to help you. So in the sting ops, I'm like, you guys need to send up one or two guys in to just be regular customers, to spend all kinds of money on me, and then just get me talking and relaxed. And then I I'll let my guard down and I might let something slip. But that's not what you did. You send these guys in that just hound me with all kinds of weird questions. What's your name? Where are you? you know, or say, say something that about me that they shouldn't know anything about. Like Mr. Wagner. Would you like me to bring you furniture? Wow. Uh, you know, here's the thing, Mr. Wagner. I never told you I didn't have any. What I told you is I got my furniture out of my storage unit. It, I mean, all I had was a bed because Mr. Perry's trying to starve me into a lie. See, the guys that are helping me, Mr. Perry, Mr. Roberson, have known me almost all my adult life. They've watched me make a shit ton of money. They watched me. At, you know, I'm 21, 22, 23 years old. Didn't have a dime because I'm just a young kid. They watched me rack up debt. They watched me pay that debt off. Fifteen grand in credit card debt I paid off. And then went and bought a bunch of furniture with cash. And then bought a new car. Build businesses. Start beginning to establish relationship with elected officials. When I was lobbying federal, I never did state, sir. So, I mean, they've known me. They've watched me. They've, they've been around me. They know me inside, outside, backward, and forward. They'll know what I'll do in any given situation, and you don't. You act like you don't even know what I'm saying. You're proving out the recordings of you. And if I'm saying this person and this person didn't want to do your little weird family intervention thing where my family is quoting you, not them, um, so is it that? Is that a leak? No, I'm not quoting them. I'm quoting you, genius. So, I, I, you know, I, it, it may not be a leak, sir. It might be a wiretap order on your phone. I don't know. I'm not told that. I don't care. I'm glad to have the information. The semantics aren't my business, nor do I want to know that, nor do I care. How that all works, I don't care. You know what's, what's, what the, what's important to me is that I got this information before you tried to do it. I knew Mike Neely was drugged before anybody else said it. It was a drug. I said it. In March 2020, what my email says will go there. This is all the subsequent stuff you did to my car. This was what was Michael Neely took a report on. My, you guys put powder all in my trunk, and it was all over the room where David Robertson had employees of Dynamic Shot staying right next to me. And I heard this weekend that Mr. Perry is staying in the same hotel I'm in in Oklahoma upstairs from me. So prove you weren't. And that is stalking. You should know or care where I am. You should not know or care. It was Father's Day, and you are not with your wife and kids. You're shitting us with this. You are in Oklahoma, staying in a hotel where I am, upstairs. 
prove that's not true. Because in a court of law, you're going to have to. If another court requires you proof that, where you are, your alibi, where you're spending your time, our court will, sir. We're the ones getting all the information, not TPD. You can pay TPD all you want. Actually, what I said, I'm not going to change what I'm saying. We heard what we heard. Unconformed rumors. You paid a whole bunch of cops in Oklahoma. They put it into evidence. You didn't get a cover-up, so you got pissed off and you had it stolen back. $25 million, Mr. Perry, is a whole lot of money. You can't hide where you spent that. So who else digging into that? See, I mean, you, you don't know what the hell is going on, do you? You never respond right to what people say. You, do, you either, David. Y'all act like you have no idea what I'm saying. Don't ask who told, and then go right back at it and go get all shocked and dismayed when things don't work out like you planned. You knew we knew. You know that I'm. if I know you're going to do X, Y, Z, I won't go where you're going to do X, Y, Z. Over and over and over, that's happened. So Robertson had his employees staying out at this place where I was in Manford. Initially, I was staying in hotels to get away from Mr. Perry. After my son graduated high school, we had a little, uh, we had a little house in um, Sepulpa. It was ghetto. After we lost the good one from a false arrest, you threatened first. We had information on first before you did it. Over and over, we get it before you did it. Who's giving me that? You've called around, and then and yet and yet you act like nobody's doing a thing about your crime, but they are. David, act like you know what I'm saying. You act like you have no idea. You act like you just fucking can't understand a word I'm saying. I've not seen anything like it in my life. Not a fucking idea what I'm saying. You ask who told, and then you go right at it anyway. And we're like, wow, it doesn't, it's so easy, it's not even fair. You're proving out a recording, dumb fuck. It's, I mean, it is, so criminals have low IQ and no impulse control. Or they wouldn't be criminals. They're stupid or they wouldn't be criminals. David, that's you? Is that you, sir? Act like you understand me. This is um, what I reported to Officer Neely six days before Chief Miller's murder. So who did he tell what he was going to? He was going to investigate further. He was going to make an arrest. Who did he tell? You? He told me. I told those guys to get their hands out of your wallet because they're putting a burden on people in my town, and I'm not going to have that. And if you were being mugged, five guys would tackle the mugger and get your purse back. They are to get your hand, their hands out of your wallet. Those are his words. I would say just take my money. Lucky Miller coined the phrase, get your hands out of my wallet. Get your hands out of her wallet. I'm not going to have people in my town inconvenienced because you are a rapist. And you're getting caught when you do it to her. And you're trying to starve her into a lie. Here's the thing. All of my motivation is to be rid of you. You're gone to help the cops that are helping me put you in jail all of you and that way with with you gone are your problems that you're causing me i won't be broke ever again i won't have to lie i guess somebody asked that question what is she he keeps doing exactly what she says what she's supposed to lie about there's so much of it at this point what in the hell is she supposed to lie about he continues to do exactly what she says all of them are <laughs> and he says my guy says, uh, at no point did she have to lie. Never did our girl have to lie. And how dare they try to force her into it. That is a crime. And by the way, I assert my right to equal protection of the application of that law. You're not wanted. Get over it and move on like a man. Mr. Perry, you're not wanted. And you got this gang against me. I don't even know what to say to that. We're all at a loss. When you get caught this much, you think you have a choice? Really? You're just used to bullying people, aren't you? Only it's different when you do it to me, because we get things like, I'm going to, then you did that. You had that, you had a brick thrown at me. I busted my engine in two. Could have been my head. And uh, it totaled my car. Then you did that one. Hit me right at the wheel. Wheel busts out. I call OHP to help me change the tire. Then you did that one. Then you did that one. Hit and run. In a parking lot where I was inside a business where I did business with. You had a 
you had it hit. <coughs> See, this is property damage, Mr. Perry, that you did. You caused an intentional injury. Anybody hit in your car? Anybody hit in your car, Mr. Roberson? How is it that you're a victim, princess? You got your little feelings hurt when I rejected you? I don't like you. You're hideous. Somebody that would do something like that. Jody Arias did something like that to Travis Alexander. And then she killed him. And then she murdered him. You're, you're a whack job, sir. I'm not going to have anything to do with you. I sure as shit wouldn't take you around my family. So the guy says, the, let me finish. I have ADD, so I jump around some. The guy says, Mr. Perry has gone up to Oklahoma and inserted himself into her, fa into her life. But everybody started thinking he's a little wacky after six years. And he's always seen with her friends and family, but never with her. He's always by himself. And uh, he's got this forged marriage license. He's telling everybody they're married. And he's making spousal decisions for a woman who's not his spouse. She's a victim of stalking. That's a crime. It's a felony in Oklahoma. There's international, I mean, I'm sorry, interstate anti-stalking laws too, sir. You're, you're from Texas. You don't need to be up here. You need to be with Jacqueline, Jordan, and Matthew, your family. And they, and then Mr. Powell, I guess, has said, is asked, does Mr. Perry know that's not his family, that's Cynthia's family? Because I'm just talking to him, and he, uh, it's, I'm, I'm worried about him. He seems a little nutty. He's a very unclear on whose family that is. It's not his family. It's her family. And I asked you to stay away from him, didn't I? So why are you just like she did? Did she not just tell Neil, stay the fuck away from my family? You tell me all the time. We got pictures of you. But the allegations are stalking. I don't have any of you. You're coming to where I am in Oklahoma, sir. I asked you to stay away from me. Stalking is a felony. It's a felony, sir. There's federal law that apply to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you act like you understand me, David? And uh, I'm going to get you. Are you? Is that a threat? You're going to get me? To, to, so you can do what? What, how, what is that going to accomplish? What has it accomplished so far? Every time you say you're going to get me and you plan another crime and you get caught planning it and then you do it and then I go, well, I told you so. You just proved out a whole bunch of recordings. I told you so. You proved out a shrink that thinks you're nuttier than a fruitcake. I told you so. You proved out a shrink that thinks you've got Alzheimer's or some kind of degenerative aging disease. Now we're hearing Huntington's and that you need to be immediately institutionalized. You're a danger to yourself and others because you're doing shit like this hitting my car. Mr. Perry, you're dangerous. We have a dead chief of police. You're, you need to be in the hospital immediately. And so your lawyers and your family may have some legal repercussions criminally because they didn't do a fucking thing about a man who can't tell fact from fiction and has spent all his time in Oklahoma in a state where he does not live doing shit like causing damage to property of a woman who rejected him. Who fucking who? What if Matthew acted like you're acting? What would you do if your son acted like you're acting? It's embarrassing, sir. You embarrass the hell out of me. Does he know that's not his family? I'm talking to him and it's, he seems kind of unclear. That's her family, not his family. And I'm telling you the same thing she said. Stay the fuck away from my family. You wrote up a script to have them do a little intervention. And you got caught doing that too, right? We need to make her look crazy. You know, the Republican convention was in Texas last week. Is that why you ramped up all the hell last week? You wanted to make your little speech, but you're giving me a whole lot of, I told you so. There was a specific threat made to my car, and then all of a sudden I got shit happened to my car. What are the chance? Always hit right at the wheel. I'm not hitting people. People are hitting me. This was the Duvalls. Mr. Robertson wanted me to call the Duvalls. I didn't. I called their insurance. When I hear you talking, Mr. Robertson, because there's some kind of whatever, leak or wiretap order or whatever it is, then I do pretty much do opposite of what I heard you say you wanted me to do. Because you coaxed Mike to, uh, to Pensacola and things did not go well for him, did they? When he did what you wanted him to do, your intentions are nefarious. They're malicious. They're intentional. You want to cause a harm. You want to cause a loss. You're intentional. I'm threatening her car, and then I'm going to wreck it. 
You intended it. It was malicious. You pre-planned it. It's premeditated. Now it's not negligence. Now it's intentional. The sentencing is a lot higher, David. Charles, when you when you commit a crime intentionally, we've met Ray, Mays Ray, have we not? You knew it was criminal. You knew we knew. And you did it anyway. Wow. So easy. It's not even fair. So... I said it before. I said it in August 2019. And you did it over and over and over. And then this was the last one. And this guy jumped up and down. Why aren't you calling the cops? Wow. Uh, j what? Why am I not calling the cops? You're shitting me with that question. Are, are, why am I not calling the cops? Um, huh. It's a Saturday afternoon. I've got somewhere to be. We're not bleeding. You can walk it into the police department. You want to file a police report. It's like, we had a wreck. You have to have that for the insurance. Yeah. So file one. Go into the office. They've got two. One downtown, Mingo Valley, or three, Rivers Riverside. That I mean, I'm getting three of them. There might even be more than that. Walk in. Get the, tell the desk clerk or sergeant or whatever, I need to file a traffic accident report. And they're going to give you a piece of paper. And you write on it. What happened? Here's what happened. And you give it back to them. And then you give a copy of it to your insurance company. And you go home. You take a picture of it with your phone. And then you go home. It's not hard. And uh, where, you know, div you don't bother patrol. Patrol has shit to do. Important shit. Real crime. To solve and deal with. And uh, actual bleeding people. So they don't need you to call them. And we're going to wait here hours for them to show up because we're not a priority when you got your little scuff there, sir. Plus, the last time I called the cop about my car, one of them ended up dead. So I'm not real jumping up and down here to call the cops. But it's weird that you are. It's kind of weird that you are. I've done this. They've done this to me. You're the fifth guy to do this, and I call the cops once. On this one, I walked it into the Mingo Valley, and I did exactly what I just said. I'm racing four generations of cops, so I know that you can do that, but most people should know you don't have to call the cops. At a car accident, That's in, you're, if you're not bleeding, you free up patrols time to do more important things. And they go, you know, you're going to wait hours in the fucking parking lot or the street or whatever it is, and they're going to come over, and then they're going to, you know, you're, you're fucking really getting on their nerves, actually, because you can do it yourself. You don't need to take their time from the bleeding guy to go over your little scuff. This one, I didn't call 311. I didn't call 911. I walked it into Mingo Valley. And I said, because I've testified for, I'm trying to testify for a police officer who tried to help me on the last car vandalism they did, I have reason to believe, officer, this could be related to stalking. I have evidence you need to look at. No, we don't take evidence here. I said, whoa. You're a police department. I know what police do. I'm raised in four generations of it. My granddad's the chief where I grew up. So, yeah, you do take evidence. Well, that that's not how we do things here. And I, I said, my attorney said to leave you with this evidence. Well, tell your attorney that's not how we do things here. I said, today it is. And I shoved the papers up under the glass and I walked out. Wow. I can't believe that conversation just happened. I've never in my life seen that. A cop that doesn't want evidence. Jesus. Who called you and told you to say that to me? David Robertson? Charles Perry? Which one called you and told you to say that to me? We don't take evidence here. So I sent it to Jerry Bender. Certified return receipt requested. I think this might be stalking related. Guess what you're supposed to do, Mr. Perry? You see this connecting the dots? I'm not going to play the whole thing. You can watch that on your own time. But that connecting the dots video says, here's what police are supposed to do with a stalking complaint. Here's how they are to treat victims of stalking. Not like you do, TPD. Hand my police report right to the offender. And uh, who then obstructs justice and takes my evidence. Because when there's a crime, again, I'm raised in four generations of police. I'm in criminal justice college. There has to be a proper collection of evidence. Then there's an investigation with review of all that evidence. 
and then there's a police determination made. And then if that looks like there's a crime and there's substantiating evidence and you've got means, motive, opportunity, evidence to support all that, mains ray, intent to commit a crime, then you go to the DA and you go, DA, I think I have a case here. We need to prosecute this bitch. He obstructed justice, committed perjury, destroyed evidence, and he thinks he should get a pass. But maybe there's a cop from somewhere else that aren't going to give him a pass. But they were really disappointed you didn't do something there. Because if you had, then I wouldn't have made a report to Chief Miller, would I? And Mike Neely. And we'd have two people back home right now instead of in jail or dead, six feet under. Ripped away from his family. Ripped away from their families. Cops. Cop family. Our guys. Cop family. Mr. Perry, I need you to understand something. I don't care what you think. No one asked you. And why do you think I care what you think? Why do you think that, sir? I would like you to, since you like talking all the time, <coughs> your crime is not a trophy, sir. It's not. You're getting caught more than ever in your life, and you have no date. You're alone. You're never going to get a date with me. You've made a fool of yourself. You've made a buffoon of yourself. And people talk about you behind your back like, oh, my God, the guy's wacky. It's, you embarrass me. You embarrass everybody. You're proving out recording, sir. That's all you're doing. Please explain why it is you think I care what you think. Why do you think that? I do not care what you think. I don't give two fucks what you think. You're wacky. You don't even make sense. You don't respond right to what people say to you. You don't understand what people are saying. You have no idea what I'm saying right now. I don't care what you think. I don't care. I don't want to hear from you. I said don't contact me. Get out of my computer. Get out of my phone. Get out. I don't care what you think. This right here, the use of technology, is talking about uh, people like doing what Mr. Perry did when he showed up at Carino's, when he has a cop waiting to pull me over using my DoorDash app or any app. If you GPS my phone or you got... Th there's people that are pretty sure you got something on my car too. Stalking is a crime in all 50 states. I assert my right to equal protection of that law. Gender bias, gender discrimination, misogyny is as bad as racism. It's sickening. It's sickening. No one cares what you think, Mr. Perry. We're all tired of hearing you talk. You need to shut up. Everybody's sick of hearing you. Act like you understand what I just said. Everybody's sick of hearing you talk. The use of technology is cops that deal with stalking. There's LAPD has a threat management unit that deals with stalking. It prevents murder. It prevents it. That's the reason the unit's there. We prevent murder. Whether it be, we got a, we got a tip off of a, a stalking problem, we got a tip off of whatever the reason is, wherever there's a threat to somebody's life. You ever heard of depraved indifference to human life? You heard of that? This, it's a crime in Oklahoma. When you know somebody could get killed, you do something. You take the appropriate precautions. This right here, I mean, I've survived all this time, TPD. I didn't have your help. I didn't, I didn't have it. I have help from somebody. Right? But it's not you. It's not you. So this says, they, they hack your phone. They can see a text in your friends. Let's go to something, something, Corino's restaurant. And then I leave one day to run errands and forget my phone. Well, my phone's at home. It should look like I'm at home. But if you're a peeping Tom, then you're going to know I left. And so, but he didn't know where I was. So, because I forgot my phone at home. So I'm running errands. He goes to Carino's looking for me. I have an email from a friend that saw it. I didn't see it. She saw it. And this, this, is an, this is the thing that said that a lot of stalking victims have to deal with that. Same thing. He's, all of a sudden, he's showing up where I am. I didn't tell him anything about where I am. He's a stalker. I'm not going to talk to him. Connecting the dots. TPD is what you're supposed to do with a police report when you got a stalking victim. Part of the, what they say is if you were reporting a vandalism because these stalker types are whack jobs and they'll vandalize your car or something, um, tell the cops that you, ha you might have a stalking situation. Mr. Perry, I need you to shut up. Will you please shut up? No one cares what you think. I don't know why you think I would care what you think. I, I, I can't figure out why the hell you think I give two fucks what you think. You're wacky. You don't even make sense. I've asked you not to contact me. Get out of my computer. He types in my computer when I'm doing these. Like, he thinks it's a conversation. I, I'm recording something, sir, in the privacy of my home. You are invading my privacy or you wouldn't know what I'm doing to think you need to comment. 
Uh, shut up. I don't care what you think. Why do you think I care what you think? Why the fuck do you think that? You give our uh, shrink a whole lot of fuel to go into a judge and say something's wrong with his mind. Who else is criminally liable for doing nothing about that? Because he continues to try to talk to her. She doesn't care what he thinks. He doesn't even understand what a word she says. Never responds right. Ever. And he never shuts up. Why do you think I care what you think? Why do you think that? Nobody understands. Why the fuck you think I give two fucks what you think? I don't care. I don't want to hear it. We're all tired of hearing what you think. Everybody's sick of you. Do you understand? You cause a lot of damage and a lot of loss and a lot of problems and a lot of drama and a lot of trouble. Profound, catastrophic loss, the kind we will never get over. When your guys are all locked up and in jail, the problems, the loss goes with you. It's gone. The unwanted contact, the harassing, the nee 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 nee. Uh, oh my God! Sh shut up. That's all gone too. It's not hard to get information at all because everybody wants you gone. All of you. When you do this shit to me, everything changed. Everything fucking changed. Everything's different now. You have a new normal and y'all act like you have no fucking idea. When I'm quoting you, not who you think a leak is. You. I'm quoting you. Then... You think you still have the things that were, the way they were, we can do a crime and get away with it. You think that, really? You have zero grasp on reality. You don't have any legal rights to make any decisions for me, Mr. Perry. You made a fool of yourself. And that was the conversation about it. He's making spousal decisions for a woman who's not eating nothing to him. A stalking victim. It's part of the stalking. They're not married. She didn't like anything. She, he's a whack job. And the guy said to him, if that's all it takes to be married to somebody now, is you watch them on TV, they don't have to like you. They don't have to ever see you. You don't have to be in the same room with them. You just forge their name to a marriage license and that's your wife. I'm married to Jennifer Anderson. That, it doesn't get any wackier. So you think there's something there? I don't think so. I, I don't think so, sir. I don't feel anything for you but deep disgust. Deep disgust. And you've told people, oh, she secretly loves me. It's she's just too afraid to say, no, no, sir, I'm afraid of you. You've tried to kill me. I, you act like I've, I mean, I've heard the recordings, Mr. Perry. Look what you've done to my car. Trying to starve me into a lie. You've threatened false arrest and then you carried it out. No, sir. You don't know how to get women to like you. I don't like you. There's nothing to like. That's the other thing our shrink said. He isn't. It's not about romance, I don't think. Because if you like women, you do what women like. What he'll do is everything she hates. And when he finds out she hates it, he does it more. And if it's something she likes, like get off your ass and go work. That, so there's something to interest you. I already know what I did all day. You watch me work. That's not, you know, what's interesting about that? That's pretty bizarre bore if you ask me. So... She likes men who are working hard and chivalrous and good to women, and treat their families right. Jackie, Jordan, and Matthew. And stay away from my family. Respect my rights and wishes and boundaries. You guys have zero, I mean, get some class and dignity. You want to be a dignitary, but you don't have any dignity. You cross boundaries and it's disgusting. You disgust me. There, when you do it to me, you're caught. So go ahead and brag about how you can starve me into a lie. And then tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to lie about when you keep doing exactly what I say. I did say he threatened to starve me into a lie. He threatened to take money that belongs to me. It's not his. So I can't pay my bills and eat to, starve, to, make, to make me against my will lie. Or make me go to Texas. Or make me go to New Mexico. Or make me do something I don't want to do. I'm a grown woman, bitch. Get away from me. Get the fuck off me, rapist. Get off me, you sick fuck rapist. You don't have my consent to peep. You don't have my consent to contact me. You don't have my consent to call people and take my money. You don't have my consent to hack. You don't have my consent to do shit. You are getting caught because you're doing it to me. 
This time you're not getting away with it, David. I get that you always have. I get that you always have. And here's the thing. All you had to do is leave me alone. I'm the Jenga piece. All you had to do is leave me the fuck alone. I didn't pick the fight. Every time you hit my car, you pick the fight. Every time you take up my time or my money, you pick the fight. I don't know you. I didn't come up here to pick a fight with you. I don't know you. I don't give a fuck about you. You're doing this stuff to me. Nobody's wrecking your car. Nobody's taking your money trying to starve you into saying something you don't want to say. You're doing that to me. How pathetic. How pathetic. Domestic violence involves economic abuse. So, there's two things that we've told you, Mr. Perry, that we watch for. And Mr. Robertson Flat told you, straight up. Here's how it is. We're looking on a coercion case for fluctuations of money. Do you give me money when you think I'm doing what you want or withhold it or take it, money that doesn't even belong to you, if you, if you think I'm not? That's coercion, enticement, coercion. Your carrot and your stick shove it up your ass. You're not to contact me at all. Your carrot and your stick, Charles, this is not a trophy for you. You act like you think all of this stuff is something that you would be proud of. No, sir, it's crime. You're going to jail. You don't know what day. Who's giving me this, these inf this information, sir? Who has the actual recordings? What day are they going to bang on your front door and put you in jail? And how much more did you want to give them? You tell me. It's not TPD. That doesn't mean there's not somebody at TPD helping us. But that's a need to know. You're no, you don't get to know. It's not your business. You're dangerous. Did you threaten those guys? Did you see what we did? The lucky Mike will do that to you. Did you threaten them? You, that's what you do to me all day. I'll give you whatever what you want if you lie. If not, I'm going to starve you into a lie. But you're going to lie. I only need to lie from telling the truth, Mr. Perry. What am I supposed to lie about when you keep doing exactly what I say and I say it beforehand? Because there's caught from somewhere else that we're put this on a need to know so that you can't go threaten them like you do TPD or whoever else you threaten. It's not for you to know. You're dangerous. You fuck off. Why can't you control yourself? Mr. Perry, why can't you shut up, go away, and control yourself? And go be dignified in Lubbock, where you live. You embarrass the hell out of me. I wouldn't walk in a room with you for millions. You could pay me millions. I won't be seen with you. I'm way out of your league. Way out of your league. I like men who work hard. So our shrink is like, he doesn't like, it's not about romance. Because she's flat said, here's what I like in men. And here's what I don't like in men. I don't like men who abuse women. Invade privacy. Do every weirdo, bizarre thing no normal person could even think of. I like men who get off their ass and go fucking work. I don't like cop killers. Charles, get off your ass and go work. And stop trying to talk to me. You need to show... I, why do you think I care what you think? I really don't. I don't care. Why do you think that? What planet are you on that you think I give two fucks what you think? I said I don't care. Shut up. We're all tired of hearing it. We're tired of hearing you talk. Shut up. Please shut up. Neil. Shut up. So, she says he does everything she hates. And when he knows she hates it, he does it more. And what she likes, he won't do that. She likes men at work hard. That's, I'm watching Fabian work. That turn, that's a turn on, sir. Your fat, lazy, perverted ass is a turn off. Women don't like being peeped on. They don't. Go find the biggest, fat, ugly bitch in a bar and try to take her home after you tell her what you do to me all day. She'll call the cops. She's not going home with you. And yet you do it more and more. And you think that's going to... Then you go, why doesn't she like me? It, that's what the shrink said. He does everything she hates and then can't figure out why she didn't like him. So, but in the end, when he goes at her, we start digging because we get all get pissed. We find out all kinds of crap. Like they're code names muffin man and they're looking for their actual recordings they got a lot of money on the table for that you know every time they try to false arrest her every time they try to you know to drain the oil out check your oil sin check your taillights in he took your taillight out again 
once you're pulled over, sin. He wants this. He wants that. He's going to do this. He's going to use your family to try to do an intervention. And we're basically going to read the script they're given. They want to starve me back out to the pole. What are they going to do to me? You Listen, you quote Mike to Pensacola. How did you know Mike had to be begged to go? He didn't want to go. You did something or said something that made him go. It's a decision I'm sure he'll forever regret. I'm not kidding. You think I'm going to make the same mistake? You coax me here. You coax me there. You coerce me into that and you coerce me into that. And so you can do what? Murder me? False arrest me? You've been trying to do that every day for years. It's building up, David. It builds up over time. So this says you're supposed to tell the police when an incident could be stalking related, like when Jody Arrington slashed Travis Alexander's tires. That's a stalking incident. Vandalism. Property destruction. Like that. You have anybody doing that to your cars? We're not stalking you. You're not a threat. You're the threat. So, then you did that one. And then you did, you need to, I mean, oh, that's four, five accidents in three years since you made the threat specific to my car. Or you try to tow it. So, we got it. It's, you're caught on that. You want to starve me into a lie. Okay, but I did say that's what you were trying to do. I said it. So we watch the fluctuations with money, and I'm flat and telling him, if Terry Wagner comes in consistently as a customer <coughs> and buys VIPs from me, and um, there's no weird stuff about it, then we don't have a coercion case, do we? You only have a coercion case if you're withdrawing money or using money to entice. Then it's coercion. Because the money, the flow of money has something to do with whether or not I'm doing what you want, not what I want. Right? Or you think I'm doing what you want, and you think I'm doing I'm not doing what you want. So you would you pull it back if I'm not doing what you want. It's money laundering, it's coercion, right? All that. If there if there's no fluctuation, it's just consistent. I don't have a case. I flat told you that, and you did it anyway. And I knew from the get go Terry worked for you. Because I don't always. So what I, I use wisdom, and I'll go right up to your guys, and I'll get them talking. Remember, I'm a sting-up specialist. I want to know what's... I'm gonna, I want my evidence. I want my evidence. I'm going to get it. Like I did Pinto. When you offer five grand for uh, a night of sex, you know, soliciting prostitution. How do you tell everybody that you're married, and then you have to... And Pinto said that. Your husband sent me. I'm like, I'm not married. And I flipped on my recorder, because he made... It got, re, it got weird. I'm suing this bitch. I, I, I want an injunctive order. I want him to stay away from me. I don't want him anywhere near me. So why? How, how did you? How did that translate into your husband? You're married. Where's the ceremony? Where's the pictures? Where's the um? What? what I'm, I didn't sign that document. In fact, if if Mr. Perry did knows I signed the document, he wouldn't be telling everybody don't show it to her. He's saying if somebody tells you don't tell her, that means it's not legal. It's not legit. Right? So then it was with my ex-husband, Mr. Robertson. It was with my ex-husband. We're watching the same thing. It's not coercion unless there's a fluctuation. On, that has something to do with whether or not I, you know, I'm doing what you think you want me to do. Starve her into a lie. And then you were recorded saying, I think we acted too soon. So you make a case or you, or you don't by what you do. You either commit coercion or you don't, right? Then I can go, well, I told you so. And people are going, what is she supposed to lie about? He keeps doing exactly what she says. What, what is she supposed to lie about? That I knew Mike Neely was drugged before anybody else said it? Or that it was confirmed later on the docket? In June, when I said it in January and March 2020, June, it pops up on the docket in a deposition. Sure as shit, he was. And, and, and you think I'm crazy? Well, I, you keep doing the same thing. You're getting the same results. Not a date. Told on and told on and told on and told on. And our shrink goes, I don't think it's about. He does the same thing. He'll get caught. He knows that when he pesters her and when he takes her money, he's going to get caught. He's going to piss everybody off and we're going to find out. He knows that. And he'll do it anyway. So he's not worried about getting caught. That's not a problem. Or at least not enough to overcome his desire to just piss everybody off.
He just enjoys pissing everybody off. It's not about getting a date. He does everything she hates and then can't figure out why she didn't like him. What well, she hates what you're doing. You're a turnoff. I like men who are chivalrous and work hard. Fabian's working. I'm watching him work. I liked that about him. Mike's husband worked hard too. So did Saeed. Anybody that I've been really close to, they worked hard and they're chivalrous. I'd never miss a meal. Here you are trying to starve me into a lie. You're sitting around on your fat, lazy ass, perverting around. You're not what I want. You're everything I wouldn't like. The thing about a relationship is you have to attract the opposite sex. And you hate women with a seething hatred. You're very abusive. You're very cruel. And everybody's had enough of it. So when you had to know, how did you find out? That's how. You pissed everybody off fucking with me. Everybody's sick and tired of watching y'all hurt me. You're pissing off the wrong people. You're pissing off people that matter. People that can do something about it. This time. This time. So you're seeing things happen you've not seen before, Muffin Man. I don't like you, Charles. You're a monster. You're a monster. Nobody that I would love would treat me that way to starve me into a lie. Well, I we knew you ramped up the shit this past week. And, not, you know, it was GOP convention in Texas. I don't care what you run for. Go run for office. Go kiss. You're not going to win an election sitting on your fat ass perverting around, causing problems for me in Oklahoma. You're going to win an election by shaking hands and kissing babies in Texas where the voters are. Go see your constituents. Find out why they're pissed off at you. It might be because you're never there. You're always up here making trouble. So now you got people in both places pissed off at you. If you can't watch the news, Mr. Robertson, and see that people don't like suffering... And they'll step up to help when there is suffering. You need to be in a nursing home too, sir. You act like you don't understand what's happening. You act like you have no idea what I'm saying. You didn't respond right. You get caught. You know you're caught and you do it anyway. Flat told you. We're watching Terry Wagner, who, by the way, comes in and tells me the first time he's in, that he's in, he's in the same business you're in. And I'm like, do you know David Robertson of Dynamic Shot? No, never heard of him. 40 years in the same state in the same industry, you never even heard of him? I'd say he'd probably sent you in here, is what that tells me. So then I'm going to sting up him, and he's asking me all the same weird questions. What's your real name? Oh, how about I bring you furniture? Oh, that's funny, because I never mentioned I needed furniture. What I told you is I just got my furniture out of my storage unit. The furniture was my bed, but you don't know that. So why do you think I need furniture? Or did David tell you to say that? Because he knows I need furniture. He's a peeping Tom too. So he told you to say that so he can get you over here and get my address? Is that, is that what's happening really? Is that what's happening really? And I'm flat telling you guys we're watching him to see if it's coercion. He, he's consistent. There's no fluctuations in the money. We don't have a case. Flat told you. It starts fluctuating with whether or not based on whether or not you think I'm doing what you want. We got a case. Enticement. You withdraw the enticement when I, you think I'm not doing what you want. And you put you, you entice or you give me money when you think I am. And you did the same thing with my ex-husband, didn't you? It's consistent. There's no case. It's not consistent. It fluctuates based on what I do. Is it what you want or not? Then you got a problem. So do what you do. I mean, we're happy to have the evidence. We'll pile it up as high as you want. Pile it up as high as you want. I'm not going to help you, Charles. You would have done nothing but ruin my life and cause problems. Nothing but that. When you're gone, all that's gone too. I'll never be broke again. I won't have to lie. And how dare you even ask me? How dare you even ask me? Right? What kind of monster does that? So then when I tell the guy, I don't call the cops. The only time, I, and I did a podcast. The only time I call the cops is if I get a flat, is that one time I got a flat tire. So what did they do? Flatten my tire, like a week later. Yeah, okay, didn't call the cops. Um, then they take my tail light out, so TPD will pull me over. So we're, un we're not sure what the obsession is with me talking to TPD. Call the cops. Something's wrong if you won't call the cops over the little scuff on my b bumper here. The, the wreck here, hold on. This, by the way, was the first time they pulled out my tail, or uh, I think it was the second or third time they pulled out my tail light. You have to have a key to my car and get entry, kind of like when you put the powder all in my trunk, there was no sign of forced entry, 
And I said to Officer Neely, they get a key from the dealer every fucking car I have. So it's still a break-in. It's just not by force. But they illegally obtain a key for my car. So you have to open the car up. You got, you got unlawful entry to my vehicle. Pop the trunk open and flip, take out the light. And my guys call me at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They took your tail light out. Go fix it. I usually wake up about 3. They woke me up. So I had to go fix it in Manford. And then you, d you did it again the other day. And you've done it now a third time. You have to have a key to get the trunk open. My car doesn't have a lock, lock from the outside. It has to be open from the inside of the vehicle. So that was illegal. That's stalking, Mr. Perry. It's a felony in Oklahoma. This is what he wanted me to call TPD over. This. Am I bleeding? Over that little scuff. Take, t take patrol's time away from all the bleeding people and all the danger and all the whatever theft and whatever shit they're having to deal with that actually matters and go call them over your little scuff here. Right? And then last time I did that, last time I called the cops over my car, one of them ended up dead six days later. So what am I going to get? You don't think that traumatized me just a little? It's not a day that goes by. I don't talk about that. <coughs> this guy back in, backed into my car and then tried to claim I hit him on his bumper with the side of my car. You can't do it. You can't do that. He backed into me. He was trying to go for the wheel like everybody else, and he missed. This is me. I did that a few months before, backing into a parking place, and I scraped the uh, garbage can. Two different incidents. But his his goes all the way across here. Almost it almost did. He almost hit the. He was try. He was shooting for that, like the rest of them, and he missed. And this right here is his text. I'm telling him, I need you to text me a picture of your car. And he wouldn't do it. I still don't have it. I said I'll never hear from him again. He's an insurance scammer Charles hired. Look at that. He's all worried. Why didn't you call the cops? You looked worried. You looked upset when I said call the cops. What? Wow. Okay. And somebody, I guess, told him, listen, the look you saw on her face, you idiot, has something to do with hap what happened to her before. You can't, don't, don't judge what people, um, their reactions when you don't have all the information. All the information is last time she called the cops, Charles, shut up, no one cares what you think. Why do you think I do? Shut up. I don't care what you think. I don't care what anything you have to say. I don't want to hear it. We're all tired of hearing it. You've caused a lot of harm. We're all sick of it. When you're gone, all that's gone with you. Mr. Perry, when you're gone, the pestering... The hacking, the peeping, it's gone with you. No one cares what you think. They don't care. We don't care. We want you to shut up. You, you have the right to remain silent. And really, for your benefit, you should. You should exercise that right. I don't want you. I don't want to talk to you. I would like you to stop contacting me. Stop contacting me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want anything to do with you. This guy, the last time he said, last time she uh, called the cops over her car, one of them ended up dead six days later, and it looks like the, the guy that hit her car did it, did the murder, and framed the, the detective that was trying to help her. So she's been traumatized over that. She's not going to just call cops. She's not going to just call the cops. And the fact that you were pressing her too is kind of strange. But that's the look you saw on her face. That's what you saw on her face. Um, and it, and it, I don't know which one I'm going to get. I'm going to get one that's on Perry's payroll, or I'm going to get one that's ends up dead, like Lucky. And then I have to live with that. I have to live with that. I made a phone call to police. Six days later, one of them is dead. The other one is accused of its murder, and I'm looking at the evidence, because I'm raised by cops and taught to do that. The evidence doesn't support his guilt. I'm supposed to testify, and for the fourth time, you won't let me testify. And you're trying to starve me into a lie. You don't need me to lie if I'm telling a lie already. I have to be telling the truth for you to try to coerce or, sh or force me against my will to lie. Or read your apology letter. Or cause, a, you know, I'm not going to, you cause extreme duress to get people to do what you want. Coercion. Racketeering. RICO Act violations. 
I assert my equal protection, my right to equal protection in the application of those laws. I, I shouldn't have to. I just have that right. We just have rights. I shouldn't have to assert them. But I do, misogynist pig. And this is your coaxing or coercing Mike Neely to Pensacola because he didn't want to go. And who are my other victims? Who's telling? Who's talking? Who's telling on me? Ha, huh, brother. Two cops came to tell me. He's trying to find a way to just false arrest you. We, they wanted us to help. We're not going to help. We're helping you. We're telling you what he's trying to do. So that let, that's why I wrote this letter. He's using law enforcement. So in it, which one am I going to get? One that ends up dead? Or one that's corrupt. I, it, it got to the, the U.S. attorney in August of 2015, seven years ago. They're quick to get back to you, aren't they, in Oklahoma? Thank God we have somebody else helping. I'm on the witness list, Mr. Perry. Why didn't I testify in that court before that jury? Yeah, you're, you're something. This is in 2015, seven years ago. He's trying to coerce a lie. He's going to cause a problem or create a situation where I'm placed under extreme duress to make me lie. Make me sign his letter of apology he wrote. It's not, uh, it's not my words, it's his words. You, you, you guys do understand that once our guys arrest you and you're in jail and you don't know what day they'll be banging on your door and you keep adding more and more and more and more and more to the thing, it piles up at this point. Uh, you, you know... Once you're gone, all the problems that you create are gone too. I'll never be broke again. I'm not going to help you make my life a living hell, you sick son of a bitch. I'm not, Charles, listen to the words I'm saying. I'm not going to help you make my life a living hell, which you have done since the day I met you. Once you're gone, the troublemaking you do is gone too. And I will never be broke again, and I won't have to lie. You are creating a situation of extreme, prolonged distress to force me against my will to do something I do not want to do or say something I do not want to say. I don't like you. Move on. Stop being a girl about it. You do everything I hate. So why would I like you? This is in 2015, October 29, 2015. And you did exactly what the email says. And you've been trying to do it again ever since I, you did the first one. And you didn't collect my blood. Where's the blood evidence that I didn't get, didn't get poisoned with arsenic? You didn't try to kill me with arsenic. That you didn't obstruct justice. That you didn't commit perjury. We got to get her back to Texas where we can make her lie. Do more to her. That was recorded. You're trying to prove, that, prove this recording out? How did I get that? You piss off people that can get shit like that from you to me. And when I tell you, if you don't stop, here's your choice, Perry. You stop. Get out of my life. I never want to hear from you again. Or they're going to do it for you. They got this. Wasn't up to you, was it? Did they call you and ask your permission? Nope. Wasn't up to you or David or any of the rest of you. It's not up to you, sir. So when I say they're gonna get, they're gonna do it for you, prissy pants. If you can't act like a big boy and behave like a grown ass man, like you understand what people say, and do it yourself, they'll do it for you. It's not up to you. And when you're gone, so are the problems you make. You're, the threat's gone. You're not a threat anymore. That's what everybody wants. That's why it's so very easy to get information. Mr. Robertson, act like you understand what I'm saying. Act like you understand. Respond like you understand words said to you that you don't have Alzheimer's. And we're having to say the same thing again and again and again. Okay, so you can intercept or redirect email. We know that. That means if I'm trying to DoorDash or Uber Eats or uh, Grubhub, you can, inter you can interfere with my uh, business. Interference with contracts and commerce with intent to coerce. We're going to starve her into a lie. Yep. This... Girl is not her. It's you. Again, you want me to go file a police report, aren't you? What's your obsession with me calling TPD? Huh? What is your obsession with that? We heard y'all talking about my room number last night because you're here staying at the same hotel, and uh, you better stay away from me. Don't get, don't come near me, bitch. 
that is stalking. You you do realize the allegations are stalking. Stalking is a felony crime in all 50 states. St uh, I'm sorry. It's a crime in all 50 states. It's a felony. You know why? Because people don't like it when you do that. It's offensive. It's weirdo. You're a weirdo. And I don't like you. Move on. You look pathetic. I left Lubbock eight years ago to get away from you. And Dive said for a decade, leave me the fuck alone. I don't like you. Move on. Leave me the fuck alone. The only thing I feel for you is disgust and repulsed. You're sick. You're sicko. Leave me the fuck alone. Act like you understand what those words mean. You can't go. You can't be a run uh, an elected official if you can't mentally keep up with everybody else, intellectually keep up with everybody else. And you're proving more and more by the day you can't, because you're not responding right to what was just said. It's illegal to make a student file a police report or go to court. It's illegal under the code Title IX that I'm asking for accommodations. So you redirected my email to where I'm not talking to her, I'm talking to you. Kind of like the phone calls to the bank the other day that I played, I recorded it and played it. How is she calling the police? Your guy said, how is she calling the police? We've got it where these girls, all of our victims, we've cloned their phones. When they make a phone call, they think they're calling somebody, they're calling us. Oh, by the way, I've heard a lot of questions about why didn't she seek unemployment with the COVID thing. Uh, again, if we're redirecting websites and shit, and Mr. Perry's trying to start me into a lie, might it be that I tried and didn't get it? Might it be that I tried and didn't get it? So, there's that. Mr. Perry intends to try to starve me and take money illegally that doesn't belong to him from me. He owes me a legitimate debt. I don't want his buy a lie money, but that's what he's trying to do. I'm going to starve you until you feel like you have no fucking choice but to take my bribe and lie. I'm saying it for the record. It's been said for the record over and over and over and over. It's on the record, sir. Over and over and over. And when you carry out the threat, now we got you on malicious aforethought. Mains Ray. Thank you. So easy, it's not even fair. Or you could just leave me the fuck alone. See that? He wants a false arrest. He's going to place her in a position of extreme duress. And force her. If you want to get out of jail, you're going to sign my letter of apology. My word's not yours. You're going to do it anyway. Because I'm Charles Perry and I said so. I can commit a crime and get away with it. That's my trophy. Really? But not this time if I know that you said it. How do I even know about a letter of apology? How do I know you had an intervention planned? How do I know you want to take my car, starve me into all the things that we want to get her back to Texas so she has to lie? We can do more to her. I'm a grown woman. You're butting in. Stalking is a crime. Coercion is a crime. You're causing duress, trying to force me to do something against my will. Without my consent, you're contacting me. I told you don't contact me. I don't want to hear it. We're all tired of hearing it. We're all really tired of hearing it. You want to lie. You need a lie. No, I get it, but I'm not going to give you one, nor do I owe you one. You're not entitled to a lie. You know what I'm entitled to? The equal protection of, uh, of the application of anti-stalking laws, anti-hacking laws, anti-peeping laws, violence against women, Title 18 of the United States Code 1512 and 1513. You're not entitled to a lie, sir. You do have the right to remain silent. You have the right to shut up. Every stupid thing you say and do can and will be used against you in a court of law. I'd exercise those rights if I were you. Because the more you do to me, the more you get caught. The more of this we get. Stuff like this. Ringtone. Shoe print. Frame her for a murder. Take her car. Starve her into a lie. Make her do things she doesn't want to do. And then go tell everybody how tough guy we are. Sometimes to the wrong people. People that can get me that. In jail. It's not some random name, it's not some random word, and I didn't get it at some random time. I got it in jail when you did the first false arrest. You did the first false arrest and obstructed justice and destroyed my evidence of your attempt to murder me. You committed perjury to make that happen. 
because I'm not a criminal and everybody knows it. And you're not a victim and everybody knows it. And what happens, Mr. Perry, is when you lie to people smarter than you, it really pisses them off because you insulted their intelligence. And for you, that is everybody. Everybody's smarter than you. We, I mean, we hear stuff. If we know what you said, we hear a lot of things. We hear a lot of things. You're sick. People are sick of you. They're, they're embarrassed by you. They're so embarrassed by you and your little dolly and your little unicorns. You are all girled up, man. That's why we call you pritzy pants. Because you um, if you want to trans, you can do that now. Just trans over and stop bothering me with your sexual frustrations. Please. That's crime causation, Matt, not lewd and lascivious. There are sex crimes, sir. Somebody has a sexual dysfunction they can't control, and they can, it makes them commit a crime. Sex offenders, you heard of it? This is, um, they usually get beat up in jail, by the way. This is, boo is to depict your fear that you cause and the sadness on the other side. And also a private joke from one of the cops and I, that my friends and I, the ones that have known how I can fucking make money. And right now they're investigating why you're taking mine, why I'm not making money. Why is he doing Why is he doing that? They have been for about two weeks now. Because all of a sudden, on my DoorDash app, I just get a whole bunch of orders I can't do anything with. They're upside down. They're not profitable. You have to be profitable. You have gas expense, and you have time. So when you get an order that says, we're going to pay you $10 to take this food from, uh, you know, Cheesecake Factory over to, uh, you know, Joe's house over here, that's three miles away. That's a pretty good deal. You're going to make money on that. You got to pay for the gas on your own. DoorDash doesn't buy your gas. You got to pay for your uh, time, your time, and wear and tear on your car. So you got to make sure you're going to make money. If you're going to drive three miles and get $10, it's worth it. If you're going to buy, if you're going to drive 10 miles and get $3, it's not. I don't take those orders. You know that. So when in, I used to get one or two of those a night. And the rest of them, I can make some money. Now, all of a sudden, in two weeks, last two weeks, since you want to starve me into a lie, I'm getting 20 of them that I can't do and two or three that I can. And that's been duly noted for the record, Mr. Perry. You pissed everybody off when you did that. So when you, when you get quoted, don't complain about it. You ask for it. <clears throat> and the guys that got me this and tell me what you just said, look, here a room number. here's a room number. I'm a stalker and I have a room number. Um, by the way, any information obtained during the commission of a felony isn't admissible. You're a stalker. You're committing the crime, not me. I'm desperate for a lie. Um, this is Fabian's name. Interestingly enough, the, the text that I sent to Fabian the, na the night David came in and talked to me about it, I did it that night. Have nothing to do with politics. Nothing to do with your job as a legislator. Right? This puzzle, David, if they can get that to me in jail and they can get to me to what you just said, when I tell you, you get out of my life or they'll do it for you, it's not up to you. It wasn't up to you when I got that. It wasn't up to you when I got what you just said. So why do you why do you think that you have choice as many times as you guys get caught? Why do you think it's up to you when I say, get out of my life or they'll do it for you? Why do you think you have a choice? Did you have a choice when I got that in jail? Not some random time. Right in jail, right up under your nose. This is the one guy who hasn't come up here and tried to coax me or, 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 or said some weird gaslighting thing you told him to say. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Nobody understands why the hell you guys think you have a choice as many times as you get caught when you do it to me. What, you, you, it's like you don't understand what people say to you. I don't want anything to do with you, Mr. Perry. That was my first false arrest. Retaliating against a public servant for doing his job by filing a false police report. A false police report was filed, and the cause of that was political. And there's no political things that I've said anywhere. Because to me, you don't matter politically. You're irrelevant. You're the new guy. I have to get elected so cops could get to you. You're a public figure. Bill Clinton, Anthony Weiner, Gary Condit, people have the right to know what you do. If you want them to hire you, they have the right to know what you do. It's a it's very effective way to catch a bad guy who does what you do by getting him in a public figure status and out mingling where you can talk to undercovers. I've, she didn't call me till February 15th. I want the evidence. She wanted the evidence. Detective Egan wanted the evidence.
she said in this voicemail. But I was already in jail. You obstructed justice. I followed that report on the 21st. You had me false arrested on the 29th. He'd already been threatening it on that October email, 2015. That's what I say. He's threatening false arrest. He wants to coerce a lie. I, I was sitting in jail. No evidence was collected. No investigation had happened. And that judge signed a warrant with no probable cause to believe any crime had been committed at all. And by the way, in Oklahoma, by law, you must file a police report if you want to get a restraining order against a stalker. And you knew that because my first one was denied. The, you know, you're getting texts and threats of death and false arrest. You need a protective order, don't you? Denied because I forgot my police report. You got to do it. So I'm following the law. You knew. You did it. In it. You, you, you went into court and you committed perjury. You committed fraud. You lied under oath. Or you're unable to identify your legislative duties. And you have Alzheimer's and forgot all about that. Number two, failure to comply with this law right here. I forgot the police report. You, you can't identify your legislative duties. You can't identify what state you work in, you legislate in. You don't legislate in Oklahoma. You legislate in Texas, right? Are you, are you okay? Do you understand words? Do you understand what state you live in? I don't want you, you sick fuck. I don't want you. You're not loved. You're not wanted. You're told on. It's hold on. It's hold on. It's hold on. It's hold on. And you act like you have no fucking idea what's happening. You never respond right. You never respond right. You don't have any chance of a date with me. Not after you, what you've done. No, nope, there's no way. This was the police report for Officer Neely. He has no injuries. A bruise, well, um, I'm sorry, a red swollen right hand, this says. This is what the cop said who arrested him. Again, we have no probable cause to believe he did anything. Because if you beat someone so badly that there's they die of blunt force trauma to the head, and you knock them back and forth so hard, they have suffer internal decapitation. That means the head came off the body. You're gonna have a, you're gonna look like you were in a fight, and yet not a mark on him. He's got a separate injury from being pulled off Chief Miller after the whole thing's over, thrown face first into the floor. So it busted his lip and his nose, and he's got a red swollen right hand. What's look at this? Oh, an IV in it. Look at that. IV in it. Nothing, not a mark on him. His hands would look like Chief Miller's face. Had he done that murder. So at this point, if you're a good cop, you understand you don't have probable cause to believe he did anything. And he wasn't tested until after he was given Narcan, which altered the chemical composition of his blood. And I said that. He wasn't tested in a timely manner. The guys, the cops that got, went over there and asked around and found out he was drugged, and the fight was actually between Lucky and y'all, what'd you give him? What's in his drink that made him pass out? He was, out, he was knocked out cold. Respiratory distress. He was dying of opioid overdose. The fight was between Lucky and you over that. Because you can tell he wasn't in a fight. And yet he's sitting in jail right now and you got us all pissed off over that. This is cop family right here. He's police. I come from four generations for, of cop. Doesn't get any more cop family than me. You, you, so you got away with this stuff all of a sudden. When you do it to me, it's different. We, I knew before it hit the docket. Again, I, I'm talking again. Before you do it. Before someone says it. I already have that information because somebody's getting that from you to me. How that happens, I don't care, and I'm not told. Stop asking. Alzheimer's, stop asking me the same questions. I've already answered. When you're gone, we all want you gone because when you're gone, the trouble's gone. It's not hard to get information. When you're gone, all the problems are gone with you, and I will never be broke again. The Starving a woman is not how you get a date. Doing things women hate is going to make women hate you. You're alone. You're by yourself. I don't like you. I don't want you. You sicken me. You sicken everybody. How could you put this man through this? How could you put this man through this? Six days. Yeah, I, I call the cops. Six days. He shows up. Six days later, he's here. I'm not going to call the cops. Not locals. Not, I mean, so why are you trying to make me call TPD? What's your obsession with me and TPD talking? What is your obsession, sir? You're making a fool of yourself. This was when Lucky asking if... This guy, this was Charles. Spoofed Lisa's account. He wanted to know, he wanted, did he come talk to you in a strip club? What he's wanting to know is what you talk about. 
yeah, this was, um, I think this was actually Josh Burson, I'm not sure. This one says, guess what, Florida State's attorney, you got the wrong guy. And the real offender's still out offending while you got the wrong guy. You're about to have egg on your face because at some point we're going to get the right guy and you're going to look stupid or cri or criminal. Are you part of the crime, Mr. S are you a, are you a corrupt politician too or a corrupt official? Uh, what are you? Because we're I'll I'll bring that out. I promise. This is police. This is cop family. We don't do we, we don't leave cop family behind. We don't do it. So this is why do you want me to talk to Tulsa police, Charles? What's your obsession with that? It's duly noted for the record. You want me to talk to Tulsa police. You want them to pull me over. You want me to call them. Why? Yeah, all of a sudden he's quiet. So he didn't, he's not typing that in my computer. So here, here's the, uh, you, you know, you do have the right to shut up. And any stupid thing you say or do can and can't, can, can, it's already being used against you in a court of law, dumb fuck. Already. Already. Right? You threatened to starve me into a lie. That's already on the record, sir. So here's this right here. When I'm telling him he was drugged and not given a full tox in a timely manner, that's a Brady violation. Because he should have been tested while he's in the knocked out and uh, in respiratory distress. So we know what was in his blood that made him be in that condition. But he's given Narcan, which I said he was, over, he was over drugged. He didn't do it. And I said it in March. Depositions weren't taken until May. Did anybody call you, Mr. Robertson and Mr. Perry, and ask your permission to get me that information? It wasn't up to you. So what I'm telling you now, get out of my life or they're going to do it for you. It's not up to you. you. You truly, after all the times you've been caught and have to ask, how did she find out about that? Think you have a choice? You do need to be in a nursing home if you actually think you have a choice. You're not responding appropriately to what's happening or what's been said. Well, what's gone on every day for six years, seven years now? It's a big case. It takes a while. TPD could have rushed, could have done some things to help, and they didn't. Did you pay them? Did you threaten them? Which one? Which one? Because I get bribed, and when I don't take the bribe, here come the threats every day, all day long. And the shrink, Mr. Perry, on the record, told that judge that. He's either threatening her or he's bribing her. He's trying to entice her or he's trying to hurt her. All day, every day. She's been subjected to extreme, prolonged distress. And she does pretty well in school. That's why they're trying to make her fail. They're trying hard to make her fail. All these men have a little meeting and try to make one woman fail. Because one woman, all of a sudden, made it all different. All of a sudden, it's all different. All the shit y'all got away with all this time, you're not getting away with it this time. It's all different. But you know what? All you had to do is leave me the fuck alone. That's all you had to do. So you want to starve me. I've duly noted it for the record, Mr. Perry, you want to starve me. You've expressed that intent. I'm not going to lie for you. Now, what you did is you gave me another, well, I told you so. I did say. He did exactly what I said. Now we got mains ray and malicious forethought. Now we got premeditation. Now the sentence will be much higher. Now the sentence will be much higher. You want to send me 20 orders I can't make money on so you can make me hungry, thinking I'll call you and go, okay, now I'll lie for you because you're forcing me against my will into it. If I want to eat, I got to lie for you. But I did sell everybody. That's what you were trying to do to me. So I don't know what I'm supposed to lie about, Mr. Perry. Do I lie about the fact that I knew Mike Neely was drugged in March or that it was confirmed in May? Which one? What do you want me to lie about? My guy said to tell you at no point do I have to lie. And how dare you ask? You pissed them off. You pissed me off that you would even ask. You're already on the record, Mr. Perry. So are you, Mr. Robertson. What you are told to do is leave me the fuck alone. Leave me the fuck alone. When he pesters her and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've not seen before. Logic would tell you then don't do anything to me. Because every time you do, you get caught more. Everything's different. That's what logic and reason would tell you. If you do X and Y happens and you don't like Y, stop doing X. If you touch the stove and you get burned because it's hot, stop touching the touch. Don't touch the stove. So when you fail to respond appropriately to what's happening and to what people are saying to you, then you begin, people begin to question your mental status. 
both of you. Reasonable, prudent, individual standard applies here and everywhere. Please just leave us alone. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please That's leave me alone. Hey, men, leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior. And you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her. You need to leave her alone. And this is Bacon. Oh.